basketball team take on the Wittenberg Tigers. It's not the start of the season quite yet. We have this first exhibition game for the Falcons here right before we're tip-off of the 2024-25 season. Good morning, everyone. Once again, thank you for joining inside the broadcast. I'm Luis Clymore, joined by Foster Ross Tycho, and be looking forward to joining you all season long. Foster, what are you looking forward to for this game? I'm looking really forward to seeing the first game of the season. The Falcons had a really good season last year, fourth in the MAC. They're expected to do very good again this season, and a healthy Falcons team should do really good in the MAC. Well, let's talk about last season a little bit because it was kind of an up and down season a little bit for Coach Chimiel in his first season. You finished 16 of 15 overall, 10 and 8 in MAC play, like you mentioned, finished fourth. Got out in the first round of the MAC tournament to Buffalo, then eventually lost to Butler in the first round of the WNIT. So, a first this season, what are you kind of expecting for this second year in terms of getting all these players back healthy, but also just the second year of the MAC in general? I'd say a MAC. Going for first in the MAC in the regular season was very much a possibility for this team. Even a MAC championship would look like something that is in the grasp of this team. If you would take last season with all the injuries and everything that happened and still say they got to the WNIT and still saw how well they did, a MAC championship is very much inside the team's wheelhouse. And it, and it's definitely interesting you said that because of talking to Coach Shamil. Last week, he mentioned the team probably overachieved a little bit last year with the amount of injuries they had. They had at one point only two players on the bench at some point, but they still managed to have a positive record and still managed to put together a good MAC season. We got Lexi Fleming coming back from her knee injury from last December. The Paige Cole is going to take another step forward. Amy Velasco, Erica Poor, they were picked all MAC selections in preseason. Who are some of the players that you're looking to spotlight for the Falcons this season? Erica Porter is obviously one, a big rebounder for the Falcons, and she's going to have to control the glass for this team to be a very solid team as rebounds really can control the game. Offensive and defenses for her. I'd say Velasquez, Velasco, my apologies. Uh, again, she came back off of leading the team with 15 points per game last season and with Fleming being out. So I'd say both of those are going to have to lead the team again, and Fleming coming back is a huge deal for this team. So that's who I'd say watch out for for the Falcons. We'll have more on the Falcons and Wittenberg when we come back here at the Stroh Center. It's the first game before the start of the real season here at the Stroh Center. It's the Bowling Green Falcons taking on the Wittenberg Tigers. We are just moments away from tip-off on Falcon Radio. graduate Jason Jackson from the Miami Heat here. Make sure to tune into the Zig Zone every Sunday at 4 p.m. on WBGU 88.1 FM, home of the Falcon Media Sports Network. BGSU graduate Jason Jackson from the Miami Heat here. When I was a Falcon, there was BGRSO. Now it's Falcon Media Sports Network. Keep up with all BGSU sports news and action by following BG underscore FMSN on Twitter slash X and check out BGFalconMedia.com. Hi, Ziggy. BGSU Sports News and Updates. Follow Falcon Media Sports Network on Twitter X at BG underscore FMSN and head over to BGFalconMedia.com. Adopt US Kids presents What to Expect When You're Expecting. A teenager. Learning the lingo. Jelly. Jelly adjective. Jelly is a shorter, better way to say jealous. As in, Chloe, I am like so jelly of your unicorn phone case. You don't have to speak teen to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Visit AdoptUSKids.org, brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, AdoptUSKids, and the Ad Council. 
Tom has been a teacher for over 40 years. One day, I think one of the students had asked the question and he didn't remember the answer. And I also noticed that he was letting his class out earlier than they were supposed to let out. I was really starting to worry. Levi and I talked about how it would change our lives, but he was there beside me. When something feels different, it could be Alzheimer's. Now is the time to talk. Visit alz.org slash our stories to learn more. A message from the Alzheimer's Association and the Ad Council. Standing up for what's right. Helping out when things go wrong. Seeking the truth and speaking our minds. Not just making records, but breaking them. Leading the way behind the camera, beyond the runway, and on the silver screen. Not just making our mark, but making a difference. Now that's a job for a Girl Scout. Girl Scouts, preparing girls for a lifetime of leadership. Don't have time to tune into a BGSU sports broadcast? Falcon Media Sports Network will have you covered with live updates of home BGSU athletic events. To follow along, head over to at BG underscore FMSN on Twitter X. BGSU Athletics Talk Radio Show. Tune into the Zig Zone every Sunday at 4 p.m., where a panel of Falcon Media Sports Network members discuss the hottest BG sports topics. Only on WBGU 88.1 FM. BGSU graduate Jason Jackson from the Miami Heat here, and you are listening to BGSU Men's Basketball on Falcon Radio. Back here at the show center for this exhibition game before the start of the 2024-2025 season for your Bowling Green Falcons as they take on the Division Three Wittenberg Tigers. Once again, I'm Lucas Kleinmore, joined by Foster Rostai. And Foster, let's go through the starting five for both teams first. For the Bowling Green Falcons, first unofficial starting 11 for, sorry, five, excuse me, for this season. Emmy Velasco, Paige Kohler, both and the guards. Taya Ellis in the four position. John A. Donahue, another guard, and Erica Porter rounds out the starting five for the Falcons. What do you got for Wittenberg? Well, Wittenberg's starting a four-guard lineup today, and this is just an unofficial one, but they got Taryn Cash, Jasmine Keynes burns Carlson Carlbloom, Kaylee Moore, and Kaysen Reagan rounding out the starting five for tonight. So some of those players for Wittenberg, who are some of the key players? We talked about Bowling Green's key players heading into this season. Who are some players from Wittenberg that had good seasons last year and that you're looking to watch this after this morning, I'd just say? I'd say Taryn Cash. Taryn Cash is the offensive leader on this team. She's their assist leader. She's averaged 5.2 last season, so I'd keep an eye out for her to be distributing the ball again this season. And Jasmine Gaines Burns was their offensive powerhouse at 12 points a game last season, so watch out for her to be scoring early and often. But Carl Bloom is also a very solid offensive player. 8.2 points, 1.1 assist, and 3.4 rebounds last season in some limited times at time, but started all 30 last year, so expected a very veteran starting lineup from this team. Wittenberg Tigers, last season 19-7 and seven overall. Averaged 71.4 points per game. Rebounded almost 40 rebounds per game. It had 50.8 assists per game as well. Shot 43.7 from the floor in 26 games. Their season came to an end. A loss against Ohio Weston, 61 to 40, that ended their season for the Tigers. But nonetheless, a pretty formidable Division Three team and a team that's got a lot of size, nonetheless. Oh, absolutely. It may be a healthy scratch for them today, but they have a six foot five center that they have on that team, and that is a dominant paint piece right there when she plays. And speaking of size for Bowling Green, one of the biggest talking points Shamil wants this team to do is they added a lot of size. They added a lot of new players, a lot of freshmen, even a lot of transfers that have a lot of size are going to be very pivotal in rebounding on both ends of the court. So who are some of the players that you think this season that are new that are going to have a big role in this team this year? Uh, for new season's players, I'd say probably uh, uh, Keston, Christine Kalu. Kalu it's a, it's a, it's a, a tongue we'll it twister. The we'll Latvian guard from transferred in here from Eastern Florida State College is a five foot eight guard. No, sorry, she is a six foot guard forward, and she's 
5.1 rebounds last year. I'd expect her to get some good boards tonight. I'd say that's my biggest transfer or freshman piece of this team. One of the many Bowling Green players that are looking to make their impact in Coach Shamil's second year. A more so veteran starting five for Shamil in this game before the start of the actual season. Except freshman Johnny Donahue, a freshman guard, five foot eight out of Fort Wayne, Indiana. They've been raving about her all offseason. Looking to have a very big year with this Falcons team. And we are just about getting ready for tip-off here at the show center. Bowling Green will be going from left to right on your radio dial. And our traditional home whites, if you can picture it in your mind, for our visual radio listeners, the Wittenberg Tigers in their red with white stripes in between. It should be a quality game. A great time for both teams to really polish what they want to do for this season. And i got to say, one of the big parts about this game, it's not an actual game. It's not going to count in a record book. I say there are a lot of high schools here, a lot of kids, a lot of elementary schools here. I would have to say maybe two-thirds of this Stroh Center right now is filled with under with kids as well. So it's very good to see that the local high schools in the community get to go see the, a really good Bowling Green Falcons team play. Absolutely. You always want to get the kids invested in the team early. When you get the kids invested, they want to stay here, they want to watch, they want to be a part of the team, and they want to learn about them. So that's always a great thing to do. Once again, starting five for the Falcons, Erica Porter, Paige Kohler, Taya Ellis. John and Donahue and Erica Porter starting five for the Falcons. And for Wittenberg, you have Cass, James Burns, James Burns, Carly Moore, Carson Carbloom, and Reagan. The starting five tip off. We Moore and Erica Porter to get this one underway here at the Stroh Center on this Tuesday morning. Whistle blown and opening tip is won by the Tigers. Oh, Cash. Tyrone Cash. Wow. Nice pass. Beautiful. Right that's to the middle of the paint. That's what we talked about just a couple minutes ago. The offensive leader of that team, Cash, is going to look to pass and get players open shots. That's Carl Bloom getting the first points of the game. Just like that, here comes the Falcons' first offensive possession. Pass in the paint to Erica Porter. Oh. Got that one to go and won. Erica Porter just knew she had a smaller player on her and took her to town down in the paint with a solid just powerhouse move and getting the and one. Well, already just first offensive possession in for the Falcons. That's signs of what we saw a lot last year, getting Porter down low in the paint, matched up one-on-one, -on -one, and being able to finish off the glass as she did so many times last season. Yes, it was a great just strength move, and she finishes off the and one as well. And that's exactly what you want to see. So good from the free throw line there, 3-2 Falcons. Now 9.30 left to go here in the first quarter. Here's Gaines Burns up the court here for the Tigers. Goes out to the right wing. Gets this one back out to Reagan. Reagan back to Moore. Moore drills inside, guarded by Donahue. Donahue puts her hands up and gets the shot. Not to go and a rebound there from Taya Ellis. That was a swarming defense by Ellis. Ellis switched three different times and then takes it full court by herself for the basket. Okay, now 5-2, Bowling Green, nine minutes ago, Taya Ellis. Getting her first basket of the day. Here's Danes Burns. Danes Burns out to Moore, kicks it one out to three, looking for Cash. Cash thought about it, goes top of the key, looking for Carbloom. Carbloom hands this one off back to Danes Burns. Danes Burns dribbles inside, working on Porter, bounce pass. And a foul going to be call called on the charge. Falcons. Did they call it? Oh, I thought they called that a charge. It looked like they were set. No, they did oh, call it a charge. They did? Yes, they did. I thought initially they said it was a foul on Erica Porter. I but think the ref charge. just walked by us, called that a charge. I think he took the call on that one. Great job of getting set by the Falcons and taking a charge. That's a hustle play. That's a good play. And if you're a coach, you love to see that. Indeed it is. Amy Velasco up the court here for Bowling Green. Out to the right wing, pass down low to Erica Porter. Porter puts up a tough shot. Can't give up the go. Gets her own rebound, puts up again, and is fouled. Way to follow your own miss. M missed it, short, got right back up as soon as she hit the ground and got that rebound by herself. We'll see who they reward the foul to. It's going to be on Carly Moore. That's her second personal foul already this first quarter. 8.34 left to go here in the first quarter. 5-2, Erica Porter is going to have a trip to the charity stripe. Substitute coming in for Wittenberg, Molly Mossing. Coming out for Carly Moore, who picked up her second personal foul. So 
a couple of attempts coming up from the free throw line for Erica Porter. And got that first one to go. Very nice, very nice. Way to finish that first one. Porter again for take number two. Money. Oh. Make it three for three for the line so far. Five point lead for the Falcons, 7 2. 8 3 left to play. Here comes the Tigers up the court once more. Cash is around to Molly. Mossing has just checked into the game. A three. That one no good. Rebounded from the Tigers. Kicks this one back out. All the way back out to Cash now. Cash guarded by Velasco. Now switched off to Ellis. Ellis to Carbloom. Carbloom a deep three. Air ball. And not a chance on that one. It goes out of play. Bowling Green takes over. The defense has been very good. Ellis has been switching on almost every guard and holding them out of the paint. So. Indeed she has. I mean, Velasco up the court to Donahue, out the Kohler. Kohler pushes off top of the key. Pass down low to Velasco Great and gets back fouled through. there. Great backdoor cut by Velasco there. Taking her defender up, acting like she's going to take a handoff, and then cutting hard back door, getting a wide open layup, and getting fouled, taking two shots now. You really saw the chemistry of Velasco and Kohler really blossom, especially towards the second half of the season last year, and a great play there from Paige Kohler. Nice pass down, looking to break out even more in her sophomore season. A tough shot, but Velasco go to the free throw line and is able to knock down the first one. As a team, Bowling Green now four from four from the free throw line. Two for three from shooting, that's 66% from the floor. Velasco perfect there, two for two. Nine, two Falcons, 7.50 left to play. Yes. Looks like number 11, Maddie Barnett, just subbed in for Whitmer. Barnett coming in, a takeaway oh. there from Donahue on Cash. And she's gonna keep that. Unable to earn the foul too. They've been raving about this freshman all offseason long and the steal there and creates a Wittenberg turnover, their first one of the day. This defense has been swarming. I'm sure Coach talked about it. Get out early and show them what you have on the defensive end. Before anything else, get the defensive tone set and that can set the tone for the entire season even though this is just an exhibition game. So after the first point, just two seconds into the game for Wittenberg, the Falcons have been on a 9-0 run and make it 11-0 as Porter gets up and over off the left hand and off the glass. A great drop step there. Had her on her high hot sides, drop step low and laid it in nicely. Here's Cash guarded by Donahue once again. That goes up to the left wing. Donahue again steals it away. Trying to give that one to Kohler. Loose ball still on the floor. Kohler dives with it. Kohler and Moore fighting over the ball on the ground and it's going to be Bowling Green possession. It's a little bit of a loose ball there, a little bit of a 50-50 scrum on the floor. That's a second straight steal there from Donahue. Yes, absolutely. She has been in Cash's hands the entire time, keeping her hands off her, but getting her hand on the ball at the same time. And looks like we got subs for both teams. Moxie coming in for Porter. Kendall Moxie, one of the new players coming in. A junior transfer from Daytona State College coming in for Erica Porter. The seventh point left to go here in the first. I mean, talk about height for height. Moxley for Porter is a amazing just advantage for the Falcons today and every game. Listed at six foot three, tallest player on the team for Bowling Green. Ellis working inside, gives this one out to Velasco, moves inside the paint and is tripped up there by Mossing. And it's going to be another foul whistled on Wittenberg, and Velasco is going to go to the free throw line. Yeah, it looks like the Falcons are making their living right now at the free throw line, getting into the paint, cutting hard, and just getting fouled. And it looks like, it looks like Mossing and uh, Velasco just got their feet tied up as she was running down and tripped up. So elusive in her movements, up and around the perimeter and moving inside. Amy Velasco, she converts there once again. 12-2 now, Bowling Green. About seven minutes to go here in the first. Velasco makes it go two for two. Velasco now second on the team in points with four. Porter, who's checked out the game with seven on two for three shooting. Here come the Tigers up the other way. Here's Barnett. There's Ellis switching on again. Oh, Barnett. That's poked away there from Ellis. Reagan picks this one back up, top of the key. Switched off here. Donahue guards out to the left wing. Here's Barnett. Barnett dribbles inside. Now moves it back at top of the key. Guarded by Ellis. Oh. 
And a whistle called, and it looks like it's going to go on Ellis. A very, you can't have your hands out in the front of the defender, and she got caught in, hands in the cookie jar. You can't do that. I like that expression. My coach always used to yell at me for doing that kind of stuff. I'd always have my <laughs> hands out there, and they, you're going to get caught. And I, I did. Ball inbound back in play. Conan outside to Barnett, and Barnett, a little floater there from the right wing is good. That score starts in the corner with that pump fake and drive and nice finish. Kohler going to try a deep three. Paige Kohler off the front of the rim and no good. Rebounded by Barnett. First three attempted of the day for the Falcons. Wittenberg looking to build on their momentum. Barnett switched off, guarded by Moxie. Moxie. A wide right there, Cronin. Cronin to Reagan. Reagan now going to try a deep three. Reagan, that one no good. Oh, over the back there from Carbloom on Amy Velasco. You Way to ball. fight down low. Oh. I thought they were calling over wow. the back there. Yes. Wow. I think yours is confused as I. I thought she had good positioning and Velasco had her on her back. Well, it looked like for us that she had a hand on her shoulder and kind of leaped over Amy Velasco's back to tip that one in play. But referee elects to change that a substitute called for head coach Fred Shimia Velasco, who just the call for that foul, checked out. In comes Christina Kulachkovska for the first time in her Falcon career. Here comes Wittenberg once again. Reagan, inbounds a pass, switched off. Kulachkovska guards. Here's Barnett. Guarded by Donahue. Looking for a third steal. Nice double play there from oh. Ellis. And we get a pass off. That one no good. But that one was tossed up there from Mossing as the shot clock ran out. That was Bowling Green wins. A great find by Wittenberg. Just great help defense though by the Falcons. Way to slide over and contest that shot without fouling late. Better change coming up for the Falcons. Ellis checking out in comes freshman Lauren Gherkin. Freshman from Finley, Ohio. Had an incredible senior high school season. Had an incredible career at Liberty Benton High School. Looking to start her career with the Falcons. As she hands this one off inside, Kohler inside, kicks this one out to left wing to Donahue. And I believe they got us on a defensive three, or an offensive three seconds call. My apologies. I did see the, th I did see the three being raised. We have three second violation to be called for the Falcons. So and that's, that's going to happen with the big. Sometimes you got a small on you, you post them up. You really want that ball because you know you have the advantage and you kind of set up home in the paint. There's Barnett down low to Cronin. Cronin guarded by Kohler. Poked away from Paige Kohler. And then gets the loose ball. Kohler trying to give this one back out to Porter. And a jump ball will be called. You see very aggressive defending so far this game from Paige Kohler and J Johnny Donahue. Knocking away a lot of those loose balls and able to get them on the floor. Yeah, absolutely. Coach must have started talking about defense starts with the guards. Keep harassing them and keep them out of the paint. They can't do anything right now. So jump ball. We're going in favor of Wittenberg. They'll inbound this one. Barnett. And this bound poked away again from Donahue. And another turnover. Donahue feeds this one out to Lauren Gherkin for her first Falcon points. What a great pass from the ground by Donahue right there. Down court. Looked like a quarterback almost. Barnett the other way, once again for Wittenberg. Leaves this one out to Carblin. Carblin to Cronin. Cronin to Reagan. Reagan switches the floor all the way to the left wing. A three there, no good. Ball's picked up from Kulachkovska. He's got a head of steam going the other way, the transfer. Kulachkovska kicks one out to a wide open page. Kohler for three, and she drains it. Great court awareness by Kulachkovska. Got down, didn't have anything, saw the trailer, hit her, and hit the wide open three. First three hit for Kohler, 18-14 Bowling Green, 4-10 left to play here. The Tigers come back the other way. Out to the right wing, Cronin guarded by Donahue. Poked away and stolen from Lauren Gherkin. And another turnover from the Tigers. Kohler comes back the other way ahead of Steve Page. Kohler! Whistle blown. And it looks like it's gonna be a call on Wittenberg. The Falcons are on the attack, getting down, collapsing the defense, and kicking it back up for wide open shots. But they don't need to kick it out because they're able to get some nice open layups instead. That foul's going to be caught on Maddie Barnett right before we reach our first media timeout. Under four minutes left to go here. 
The Falcons 18, the Wittenberg Tigers four here. A 14 point lead for head coach Fred Shamil on this exhibition game. You're listening to the BGC Women's Basketball here on Falcon Radio. In Bowling Green football's 41-17 season opening victory over Fordham on August 29th, junior Justin Pace set a program record with a 100-yard kickoff return touchdown on the first play of the game. Falcon Media Sports Network's Reese Patrikas had the call on Falcon Radio. Go back up and field it on the goal line. Trying to take to the right, got some blocks, got a hole. Peg was down the far sideline, and he's got space in front of him. 10-5, touchdown BG brings back the opening kickoff. What a way to start the season. This has been a Falcon Media Sports Network featured call. NHL star Matt Martin for American Humane. I've had my fair share of bruises and injuries. But for many who put their lives on the line every day, it's not always the injuries you can see that hurt the most. Every single day, 184 veterans are diagnosed with post-traumatic stress. When medications and... ...center here in Bowling Green for this exhibition matchup. Bowling Green 18, Wittenberg 4, 14 point lead for the Falcons. I'm once again with this time, Marco alongside Foster Rostai for this Tuesday morning basketball action. What are you making the action so far, Foster? It's very fast-paced basketball, especially from the Falcon side, and swarming defense from Falcons. They've been getting up and har harassing these guards for Wittenberg the entire time so far. So the five on the floor for the Falcons, Paige Kohler, Erica Kohler, Christiana Kulaczkowska, Emily Cecil will check in for the first time today. And Lauren Gherkin, who is 35, five right now for head coach Fred Shamil. Point leaders right now for the Falcons, Erica Porter, seven points on two for three shooting. Amy Velasco, four points. Four for four all from the charity stripe. Pitch Porter hit a three. She has three points as well. And a couple points from Gherkin and Ellis. So we have just under four minutes left to go here in the first quarter. A 14-point lead for the Falcons. Right before we left off, a foul from Maddie Barnett from Wittenberg has put Kohler to the free throw line for the first time this morning. Kohler's first one is no good. Is up the front of the rim and rolls out. Able to drain her second one, so one for two there from the trip. Makes it a 15 point lead now for the Falcons. Velasco has subbed back in there for Kohler. And they're pressing. Lasco will so up there, top pressing Cash. Cash is also checked back into the floor for Wittenberg, guarded by Cecil. There's this one back to Carl Bloom. Carl Bloom out a deep two, and that one hits off the front of the rim and rolls in. Great use of the step back there by Carl Bloom. Got their defender moving towards the basket, stopped on a dime, step back, and hit the free. Nice free throw line jumper. Amy Velasco back the other way, out to the right wing. Kolaskovska, top of the key, Gherkin. Out left wing, Cecil gives it back to Velasco, drives inside. Velasco puts up a tough shot there, whistle called, and another foul on the Centerville native. Yes, she got some great kind of screens. They weren't really screens. They were just kind of playing through and kind of had their arms up like, hey, these aren't screens, but watch out, we will run you over still. And <laughs> just got a nice head of steam going towards the basket and got Cash to foul there. That's going to be Cash's second personal foul of the game. And Velasco, for the third time this game, is going to go to the free throw line. Perfect so far. And she'll be 5 for 5. Make it 26. Bowling Green with 325 left to play. Velasco for her sec sixth attempt and her second attempt from the line is good. 21-6 Bowling Green. Here's Cass once again. There's this one outside to Boyd. He's checked in for the first time this game for Wittenberg. Boyd, how I left to Barnett. Barnett checks it inside, now moves inside the paint. Back on the top of the key, the Carboom. Carboom hands this one off, and a little floater there. 
from Boyd is good. Great ball movement, great to get into the lane and hit a nice little floater. That's some nice movements there you see from one very nice couple of screens, just nice overall movement of the basketball. You got Boyd there in open space inside the paint, pretty much right by the free throw line and a nice little floater. Yes, I, and the Falcons turned the ball over. And it looks like a, it might have been a, a baseline, uh, baseline f turnover. I believe you're right there, my friend. That is so not one you see often. So Wittenberg will take over here once again. Cash, top of the key, moving inside board. Now back out to to Mossing, and that's just a, sh a shot that was highly contested and wasn't going to fall. Cecil, back the other way for the Falcons. Cecil out wide left to Velasco. Velasco. Here's Gherkin. Back out top of the key to Velasco. Velasco hands out to Kuklovskoska. Drives inside, nice pass to Porter, and that one swatted away there from Carbloom. That was a great pass, great house type defense by Carbloom to get behind him and block the shot still, but that's what you like to see, way to get down low and pass to the big. So Wittenberg D back the other way, a three-pointer from Barnett. Ricochet is in and out, and rebounded there from Erica Porter. And Porter's got a full head of steam coming back the other way. Nice little turn, Erica Porter off the glass and in. And taking it court to court, end to end, let her go and let her work. Nine points now for Porter, 23-8 Bowling Green. 1.45 left to go here in the first. Cash, guarded by Cecil, Cash. Out to the right wing now, moving more central. Kess switches all the way to the left. Here's Barnett. Barnett loses the ball. Cecil tries to dive for it. The backcourt violation there. And the backcourt violation will be called. So nice work from Emily Cecil defensively. And Bowling Green will take over. Great hustle as well by both players. They both were diving on the court, diving to get that loose ball. But it doesn't matter as it was a backcourt violation on Wittenberg. So Ellis will check back into the game, and for the first time this game, Jasmine Fern will check in for Bowling Green. So right now you get Fern, Ellis, Kulachkowska, Velasco, and Cecil on the court. Velasco feeds this one to Taya Ellis, puts up a shot there, can get that one to fall. And it was rebounded there by Ballard, who's just checked into the game for Wittenberg as well. And they'll take over. A little bit over-aggressive on the rebound, trying to get a steal off it, but... You know, you're going to have those. That's all right. I do like the aggressive off the rebound. Cash works inside, moves left. Cash outside top for Cronin. Cronin moves back to the left. Ellis put her hands up there. Can't quite get the ball. Cash just throws it off the other side of the rim, trying to switch the ball. Bull and Green comes back the other way with Ellis, who's got a full head of steam once again. Has the ball knocked away from her hands. It's turnover. That one was poked away from Cronin. Now Winberg comes back the other way. Now here's Cash once again. Cash once again moves inside the paint. A left hand little hook off the glass and in. And Cash gets that one to fall. Both teams getting a little jumpy here at the end of the quarter. Trying to go a little bit too fast for their own good. 41 seconds left in county. 23-10 now. Bowling Green leads Winberg finally up to double digits. Gherkin pass inside looking for Ellis. Gets Great the use fall. of the pump fake there. Got her defender up. Cleared her out and was able to make a clean layup there. Excuse me, that was Jasmine Fern rather than Lauren Gergen. My apologies. Nonetheless, Ellis knocking that one down. Cash once again. This time moves right. A tough shot there. Overhit it. A rebound once again from Ellis. Come back the other way. Cecil all the way to the right corner is Kulaskovska. Her three is a little bit short. Rebounding there from Austin. Here comes Wittenberg the other way. Now a three of Wittenberg's own. That one's good right at the buzzer. Reagan, a three right at the death of the first quarter. 25-23, cutting the lead to just 12. As the Falcons lead by double digits, a pretty comfortable lead heading into the first. I think they had a great first quarter. They kind of let Wittenberg build their way back into it after that in the last minute, minute and a half there. Got a little too quick for their own good. They need to slow themselves down, play their type of basketball, and just take those layups that they've been getting all game so far. 25 for Bowling Green, 13 for Wittenberg. And in the first quarter here at the Strauss Center, the Falcons have a 12-point lead over the Tigers. Listen to women's basketball on Falcon Radio.
On September 13th, BGSU men's soccer's Bennett Painter scored the game-winning goal against Northern Illinois, leading to the team getting nationally ranked. Falcon Media Sports Network's Lucas Kleimeyer had the call on the WBGU PBS YouTube channel. Gonna win that one initially, head up again. Wins the second one, however, back to lane, back to Painter. That one's blocked, gets it back, Painter! Painter, Painter! Paints another masterclass at Cochrane Stadium. This has been a Falcon Media Sports Network featured call. NHL star Matt Martin for American Humane. I've had my fair share of bruises and injuries. But for many who put their lives on the line every day, it's not always the injuries you can see that hurt the most. Every single day, 184 veterans are diagnosed with post-traumatic stress. When medications and therapy don't help, professionally trained service dogs can. American Humane has created a free guide to help veterans obtain these life-saving animals. For help, please go to AmericanHumane.org. Welcome back inside the Surf Center. We're just moments away from the start of second quarter action here in this exhibition game before the start of the official start of the 2024-2025 women's basketball season. Bowling Green 25, Wittenberg 13. I'm Lucas Kleinmark, throwing alongside Foster Rising. Thank you again for tuning in on your Tuesday morning. About 29 minutes away from here from noon to start of the afternoon. Foster, what'd you make of the first quarter? I thought there was really good offense from both sides at the times. Falcons got downhill a lot and they got into the paint, which is where you want to make your living in the first quarter. You want to get those easy shots in the paint. And then they started to widen their range. They started to get some nice threes, open threes on trailers. That's a good offensive identity to have. For Bowling Green, they're 7 from 12 there from the floor. Windenburg was 6 for 15, so 58%. For the Falcons, 40% for Wittenberg, 1 for 3 for 3 for the Orange and Brown, and 1 for 6 for Wittenberg. As they have a 12-point lead here as we get underway for the second quarter action. And Bowling Green has possession going the other way. Kulas Kovska kicks this one out to Jasmine Bird, who unloads for 3 and gets that one to go. How about that? Jasmine Bird, her first points of the day. 28-13 now, Bowling Green, 9 third left to go here in the first. Here comes Wittenberg, the other way. Back outside, here's Reagan. Reagan to Cronin. Very nice defending there from Ellis. Just in the grill of Cronin. And a travel called on Carl Bloom. That's great defense. Switching a lot on the top from guard to guard screens and keeping a defender in front of in, in front of the offensive player and they forcing a turnover by a travel. Five on the court, Velasco, Emily Cecil, Jasmine Fern, Brooke Simpson for the first time in her Falcon career and Taya Ellis for the Orange and Brown. It's actually Kulash Kovska. Here's Falcons working the ball. Fern gives it inside to Ellis. Ellis works one-on-one -on -one underneath the basket, and Ellis gets that one to go, wins that battle. 30-13 to 13 now, Bowling Green. Great, great shot by Ellis. Way to get down low, get to her spot, and just lay it up easy. And a long three coming on for Wittenberg. That was a quick three from Reagan. That one's over. Shot Cecil comes back the other way. Jasmine Furge is going to try another three. That one is no good. Rebounded there from the Tigers. That's Baker getting her first piece of action in the game, getting a rebound. Carbloom, Cronin, outside to the right wing, guarded by Velasco, now Fern. Reagan, Reagan switches all the way to the left. Reagan a three and gets that one to ricochet in. So how about a three there from Reagan? 30 to 16 now, Bowling Green. Yes, absolutely, that was a great shot, great. Just, they had the defender sagging off a little bit and took the wide open shot that they had. Fern gives this one inside to Ellis. Ellis, oh nice pass, looking for Cecil, just quite can't hold it in. And it goes off the shin of Emily Cecil, be, Bolt, be Witt, Wittenberg ball. I think Cecil came down a little quick from what Ellis was looking for. It came, came, the pass came in a little low on her and it just bounced off her shins. So a plethora of changes from Fred Shimio. Johnny Donahue coming in for the Falcons. Paige Kohler checking back in as well. 
And for the first time in her Falcon career, Layla Harrison, the freshman from Cincinnati, Ohio, out of Mount Notre Dame High School, we checking in for Bowling Green. So foul called there, be Wittenberg ball. And if you didn't see it, Donahue got her hand on it and knocked it out there. She has been getting her hands on every time on the ball every time it's been around her. She's been swarming defender. Little give and go here, top of the key from Wittenberg. Now back out to Reagan. Reagan. Grabbed by Harrison Reagan. Now a little deep two there. It's good from Wittenberg. That was Carl Bloom, a little tough contested two. He gets that one the fall. Carl Bloom is starting to warm up. She's hitting a couple nice shots recently. She's starting to look like she's getting into a rhythm. Got to get her out of that rhythm if we want to keep on this great offensive game we've been playing. Kohler, Fern, to Donahue moving inside is Harrison. Her first shot as, in a, as a Falcon is no good. A little overshot that one there. The Tigers come back the other way and a quick three. Off the front of the rim, that was Cronin. I don't know for the Tigers, and a go-out bounce for Bowling Green Ball. I think that offensive shot by last, on the, our last one was a little bit of nerves. That's her first college shot. Probably got a little excited. She wanted to get that yeah. first bucket, but she'll calm herself down and get a nice bucket this game, I'd say. Wimberg finds themselves a little bit colder. There has that one knocked away from Baker initially. Trying to dribble outside the court. Colder guarded by Baker. And off the court. Ellis out to Donahue. Donahue out wide left to Harrison. Harrison kicks down low to Porter. And once again, Erica Porter, nice little spin move off the left. And gets that one to fall. She's been unstoppable in the paint this game. And another turnover from Wittenberg as Cronin has that one picked off from Ellis. Ellis out to the right. That one knocked away from Cronin looking for Kohler. It'll be Bowling Green ball regardless. Great, great vision by everyone. Harris got the ball up top, waited just a second, faked the pass, made a pass down to Porter, and Porter, nice, drops that spun up, laid it up easily. So Ellis will have that steal. We'll get a talking to from Fred Shamil, and we'll have a timeout here with 6.27 left to go here in the second quarter. The Bowling Green Falcons 32, the Wittenberg Tigers 18. You're listening to the Women's Basketball Exhibition Game here on Falcon Radio. miss a BGSU sports broadcast, head over to the BG Falcon Media YouTube channel to listen to past calls by Falcon Media Sports Network. Did you ever ride your bike with a clothespin and a baseball card? Or use a typewriter for a school paper? Then here's a timely alert. Americans born from 1945 to 1965 are five times more likely to have hepatitis C, which often has no symptoms, but is a leading cause of liver cancer. The good news? Treatments are available that can cure hepatitis C. Talk with your doctor about getting a blood test for hepatitis C. Know for sure. A message from the CDC. Bowling Green State University adopted the Falcon nickname for athletics symbolizing speed and courage on October 28, 1927. This has been History in Falcon Athletics. These times. Back here at the show center here for the school day game or before the official start of the 2024 women's basketball season. The Bowling Green Falcons 32, the Wittenberg Tigers 18, so a 14 point lead. For the Falcons, welcome back inside the broadcast. I'm Lucas Palmer, joined alongside Foster Rostai. Pretty good game up so far, but Winbrook seems to be getting a little bit more momentum going. They are. They've taken a little bit of time to get themselves settled in, and now that they've settled in, they've started finding very nice open shots that they're, they feel comfortable taking. They pass it out of a couple shots that they don't feel too comfortable and found a nice open shot that they like. Lauren Gherkin will be checking in for the Falcons. So on the floor, Gherkin, Layla Harrison, Erica Porter, Johnny Donahue. And Paige Kohler, the five for the Falcons. For the Winnipeg Tigers, Cash, Gaines, Burns, Carbloom, Baker, and Lawson. So for the five starters, they have to start this game minus Baker for the Tigers. Got to say, it's very nice to see all, all the kids around this area just have the game and playing a lot of this, a lot of songs from familiar Disney movies. Absolutely. It's always good to see them. And some songs that we look back on our youth and say, yeah. oh, yeah, that's a good song right there. A lot of fun. Absolutely. A lot of fun for sure. That's what this game is all about, especially in a game that's not an official game that counts towards a record just yet. Paige Kohler will inbound this one for the Falcons. 
Lauren Gherkin hands one back off the Kohler. Kohler now dribbles right. Hands this one back off to Donahue. Donahue. Top of Keenan moves inside the paint. Oh, nice little move. Donahue gets that one to go with the right. Down and Donahue, her first points in a Falcon uniform. And Donahue immediately trying to seal the ball. A little bit of an incidental contact there that they kind of got caught up in the air, but that's all right. But that was a great Euro step between two defenders to get it into an open spot and just float it right in. Six steals for the Falcons so far this game. Four of them have come from the freshman Donnie Hughes. She's been super aggressive defensively this game. As the Wittenberg Tigers come back the other way, here's Gaines Burns. Gaines Burns dribbles inside, puts on a move on Harrison. That kicks it back out to left wing for Baker. That three hits off the top of the rim. Porter can't hold in the rebound. Baker does well. There's a crash. And get her own rebound, and a foul going to be called on Lauren Gherkin. As Gherkin and Porter were both tied up, Baker did well to fight both defenders there. Absolutely. She saw that job kind of go a little short, kind of stepped in. She didn't run back on defense, and then saw that it, it was tipped out in her direction and went over and grabbed it. It gains Burns pass a little off the mark there, looking for Mossy. We're now entering 10 on the shot clock. 5-4 left to go here, 34-18 Bowling Green. Now down to nine, a deep three there from Moss Singh. We actually Carl Bloom that one off the mark and rebounded from, Car from Kohler. Kohler. And this one off to Harrison. Harrison. Hands off to Donahue. Donahue works top of the key, looking to give this one back to Porter. Has that one poked away. And aggressive there, trying to crush the boards and. So the ball back there from Baker, and she's going to be called for a foul. There. That one's a little bit of a frustration foul. She kind of lost the ball midair, trying to make a pass. Wanted to get it back, you know, make up for her own mistake, but a little bit too fast, a little bit out of control. That's all right. You like to see her hustle and try to make up for her own mistakes. And you see her Donahue going to get checked down, and get a talking to you from Shamil, kind of just trying to calm down a little bit there on, on the misplay. So she'll check out. And then comes Christiana Kulaskovska, that three-point attempt from way downtown. From McCain's Burns is way off the mark. Rebounder from Kohler, and Kohler's gonna come back the other way. Come looking to hand that one off to Porter. Initially, they took it herself there, took a lot of contact trying to put that shot up there and earns a foul. Yeah, she got her head down, put her head down, drove down the down the middle of the defense very strongly. Kind of had that ball on her hip, and when she went up, they got a hand in it, in her way, and got a foul called. So Paige Kohler will go to the line once again this game. Had one trip so far. Was one for two in the first quarter, four points off of one to three throw to make and a three pointer in the first. And that first one there will roll in and out from Kohler. We're going to get two for four on the day. We're going to get back at 50%. But she able to knock that one down. 35 18 Bowling Green now, under five minutes left to play here in the second. Here come the Tigers the other way. Here's Barnett. Barnett. And just one back off to Cash. Cash guarded by Kohler. Cash drives to the byline and putting up a shot there, but into the hands of Lauren Gherkin. Gherkin the other way, and a nice telegraph pass there from Baker. Steals that one, and an easy bucket from Baker. Baker was hiding kind of up in the middle of the court. Nobody really saw her, and when she saw that pass, gonna kind of lazily came across, she jumped it. The sky is very weather. Velasco looking for Kulachkovska. They're not on the same page. She didn't turn to look at the ball. Velasco's trying to feed her inside. The one green will still remain with possession as a whistle is called and a foul on Barnett. Her second personal foul off, off that pass from Velasco. Velasco inbounds this one to Porter down low underneath the basket, and that's as easy as you'll like for Erica Porter. Gets that one to go. She now has 13 points. Absolutely. That's a great inbound place just to get her wide open under the rim. Barnett. Baker. Baker. Carl Bloom, a deep three. Carl Bloom has that one go in and out. And rebounded from, from Kohler. Kohler back the other way. Guarded by Baker. Hands this one off to Velasco. Velasco. Velasco drives inside. Tried to hand that one off the last second before the contact came to Erica Porter underneath the basket, but drawing the foul. Which will go to the free throw line. There's Lauren Gherkin. We'll check out of this game and come back in as Jasmine Fern. So, correction, not the free throw line. Instead, Bowling Green will still have offensive possession underneath the basket. Velasco inbound this one. 
Kohler. Blasts off a foot of a Wittenberg Tiger. Mulligan will do it again. A change from the Tigers. Boy will check back into this game. In comes out as Cash. Velasco in, will inbound this one for a third straight time. Porter. Oh, nice little move there. Nice inbound. A couple dribbles and then lays that one up and get 39 20, almost a 20 point lead for the Falcons. Three before he left to go here in the second. Porter has been dominating the paint so far. Nobody's really been able to match up with her height wise, and she's just been able to push everyone out of the way and take up these nice, easy layups. Reagan out to Barnett. Barnett, screen set there from Baller, who's just checking in the game. Instead, she'll like to go all the way back up to about the logo. Whistle blown. And it's going to be on Bowling Green. It's going to be on Amy Velasco for a second personal foul there. A couple switch offs there from Wittenberg kind of confused the Falcons and Velasco there for a little bit too much contact. Yeah, they've been doing a lot of high ball screens from guard to guard. That's got to be communication by guards, and they've been doing, doing a really good job most of the game. But sometimes you're going to get a miscommunication, you're going to get a wrong switch, and you're going to get a foul like that. With that second pers personal foul, Velasco will check out. Emily Cecil will check back in. Here's Barnett. Barnett out wide to the left wing. Gives this one back. Here's Boyd. Boyd back up to Barnett in the left corner. Now moves that right. Now moves up to the top of the key. Guarded now by Cecil. Moves all the way up to the right side to the byline. Puts up a tough shot there and a whistle blown and a foul called on the Falcons. She'll go to the charity strike. That was really good defense for almost the entire shot clock. Kind of got in the, a bad situation and fouled them, but great defense. Way to keep him out of the paint for the almost the entire of the shot clock. Jasmine Fern will be rewarded her first personal foul. First one coming in there is off the front of the rim and no good there from Barnett. This is Wittenberg's first trip to the free throw line this game. And they still haven't made one yet. 0 for 2 there for the line for Barnett. Here come the Falcons the other way. Kohler. Far out to the right corner. Get this one inside to Porter. Puts up a shot there. Can't get one, that one to fall. Baller there on the rebound. Wimber looks to go quick. Barnett. Howard to Carl Bloom. Carl Bloom drives inside. Beats the contact on Porter and one. And that was some fast paced action there going from one end of the court to the other and switching sides. And nice finish and play there for Carl Bloom. Actually, that was a great screen as well. In the middle of the court, kind of free throw line area. Got a switch and got the center, Porter, kind of out of position and then forced her to foul. So Erica Porter, second personal. So after not going to the free throw line at all in the first quarter with 2.41 left to go here in the second, this is the second trip in back-to-back -back offensive possessions for the Tigers, and this time it's going to be Carl Bloom. And her first attempt is good, so she finishes off the three-point play. Now 39-23, Bowling Green. There's Kohler. Out to the right wing, Kohler. Now in the corner, Cecil. Cecil looking to find Kendall Moxie inside. Kohler beats the contact, dribbles inside. How about that from the sophomore? Gain that one to fall off the glass. Bank is open. It is normal banking time, so that does make sense for today. 41-23 Bowling Green on turnover there. Stolen away from Kendall Moxie on the defensive end. Here come the Falcons the other way. Cecil sees out wide left to Fern. Jasmine Fern a little... Shot there from the left corner. That one no good. And a crashing of bodies there from Ken Omoxi and Christian Kulashkowska. Yeah, just a little too happy. Saw that ball up. Good attempt for a rebound there, but caught somebody who was underneath there. So foul call is going to be a reward to... Ulatskovska, her first personal she'll check out, along with Fern for Ellis and Simpson. So the Wittenberg Tigers will go to the free throw line once again with that foul on the transfer. And this time Boyd from the free throw line, she can't get that one to go. Her second attempt, and that one's not close either. So Wittenberg struggling from the free throw line. That's one for five now, and an 0 for two trip there. 
from Boyd. Back on the other way. Here's Brooks Simpson. Simpson looking side to Moxie and a travel call on the six for three junior. That was great, great by Simpson to find Moxie down low, but got to get those seats set, slowing yourself down a little bit. And, and besides that, it was a great, great layup. Here's Barnett. Left corner looking for orders. The newly Wittenberg players just checked into this game. Now Boyd. Boyd top of the key out to the left wing. Barnett. Barnett drills inside. It goes all the way to the right. And one. Gained that one to go. Paige Kohler was going to be called with the contact. She started that play all the way from the left wing dribble all the way to the right. And almost kind of a hook shot there with her right hand and hit off the glass and got that one to fall. So a chance for her to get three. Yes. I believe the problem in there was we had a player in the restricted area. Can't stay in there. But it was a great attempt to take a charge, and that's what you'd like to see. So Kohler's first personal foul. And we get that one to go. So two for six for the line now. 41-26 Bowling Green as that one is going to be on Emily Cecil. Oh, actually... Reverse call. Can't quite see the hangover. It's going to be Maddie Barnett's third personal. Looks like both players there were both physical. But they're actually right, so going to go with Barnett. So that's her third already before halftime. So Falcons will keep possession as Cole will find Moxie. Can't get that one to go. Cecil comes up with the rebound and kicks this one out to the top of the key for Kohler. Kohler. Taking on three, Wittenberg, the players, and moves inside, and Kohler off the left hand, gets that one to fall, 43-26. Under men left the play here in the second. Here's Barnett for the Tigers. Barnett down low to Carbloom. Now Carbloom a deep two, and that one just short, and rebounded there from Ellis. Here's Kohler, 39 seconds left in counting. Kohler. I saw a couple dribbles behind the back pole. Thinking, thought about a three. And instead gives this one to Cecil. Cecil drives inside Emily Cecil. Hands one off to Kendall Moxie. Puts the shot up there. A little bit of too much contact there on the wrist. And it's going to be a foul called on the Tigers. That was a great ball vision. Saw that the defender on Moxie stepped up to guard her and just dropped it off. An easy, easy attempt. Carson Conbloom will have her pick up her first personal. It'll be Moxie going to the charity stripe. Twenty-six point nine seconds left before halftime. Forty-three twenty-six, Bowling Green. As Moxie got that one to go, drains it. Make it forty-five twenty-six now, Falcons. And checking in for Bowling Green. It is Taylor Wallace for the first time and her bowling career, the freshman guard from Shelby Township, Michigan. Now 50 seconds left. Moving inside, Barnett. Loose pass there, trying to keep this one alive. Just able to, well, it was Boyd, a little too much contact there on Cecil. And the foul's gonna be called on Cecil. Yeah. That's a great place. You want to have a trap up there. Little too over aggressive. I, but I think Coach, right now for the Falcons, I think he's arguing for a hook there. It, it did seem there could have been a hook there. I mean, the, it was really close to being, almost being a backcourt violation. She kept, barely kept that ball in play. Yes. But regardless, Boyd would go to the free throw line once again. She was one for one, bef oh, for two before, excuse me. Now one for three. She's one for one from the floor this game. Boyd's second attempt, that one's off the front of the rim and no good. And the last touch off the Wittenberg Tiger. And Taya Ellis will run down this one for the Falcons. Here's Cecil with three seconds left to go. Cecil gives one off to Brooks Simpson. Shot clock running down. Simpson's at the buzzer. Brooks Simpson off the front of the rim and just rolls out. So that close to a buzzer beater right before the end of halftime. Great shot, great vision to get up, get hustling up to, to a nice spot where she feels comfortable and taking a nice shot. 
20 minutes of basketball is in the books. The Bowling Green Falcons 45, the Winburg Tigers 27 here in the school day exhibition game here before the start of the 2024-2025 women's basketball season. We'll take a short break and be back with you for halftime thoughts here on Falcon Radio. This season, Falcon Media Sports Network is partnering with WBGU PBS. We will bring you broadcasts of home matches for BGSU men's and women's soccer featuring FMSN's Lucas Kleimeyer and Henry Costco. Head over to the WBGU PBS YouTube channel to listen in. Hi, I'm Jaden Fajario on the women's soccer team and I'm doing my Falcon 4 favorite places in BG. First would have to be Meyer. second would have to be Juniper, third would have to be the beach, and number four would be the fires behind the business building. Thanks. My name is Malcolm Johnson Jr., senior wide receiver, and my Falcon 4 favorite NFL teams are the Ravens, because it's in my hometown, the Texans, because Stefan Diggs, and he's from Maryland, the New York Giants, because, well, I love their colors, and the Commanders, because my favorite NFL player is Sean Taylor. Go Falcons. What's going on, guys? I'm Darius Lorfield's junior safety here at BG. Uh, my Falcon 4 favorite things for homecoming, definitely seeing some of the alumni, you know, the big crowd, you know, hearing them roar, uh, the Falcon walk pregame, getting to see more people, and then just winning the game overall and celebrating after. Go Falcons. This week's Falcon Media Sports Network Athlete of the Week is cross-country junior Kylie Cubison. Cubison led the Falcons to their second straight Falcon Invitational win, pacing the team and finishing second invitationally with a time of 20.52.2. Cubison was one of four Falcons to finish top 10 in the 6K race. Cubison has now placed top 10 in three of the four races this season. Cubison ran a personal best 6K time of 20.49.9 at the Paul Short Invitational earlier this season on October 5th. Next, Cubison and the Falcons will participate in the MAC Championships in Muncie, Indiana on November 2nd and the NCAA Regional in Akron, Ohio on November 15th. This has been 60 Seconds in Falcon Athletics. I'm a wife, a sister, and a grandfather. I'm an office clerk. I'm a research analyst, dance fitness instructor, actor. I'm a copywriter. I'm a veteran. I have lupus, cerebral palsy. I'm blind. And I'm working in a job I love. I love. Because I was given a chance to contribute my skills and talents. To show that my disability is only one part of who I am. Who I am. Who I am. At work, it's what people can do that matters. For more information, visit whatcanyoudocampaign.org. Sweet strawberry icing. You're in goodwill and just past that vintage denim jacket you spot. Miniature donut earrings. You lean in. Ah, oh, that's the scent of shopping success. Because at Goodwill, every item you buy funds local job training and more. So bring home those donut earrings and bring home so much good to your community. Goodwill. Bring good home. Brought to you by Goodwill and the Ad Council. My name is Hunter Hayes. I know myself and I know my buzzed warning signs. One shot is about knowing my limits or not necessarily knowing my limits. I start with one shot to have a good time. One of the signs that I'm starting to feel a little buzz is when I start solving not only my own problems, but the entire world's problems. When I know I'm going out, I know I'm gonna start with calling for a ride. Buzz driving is drunk driving. A message brought to you by NHTSA and the Ad Council. My name is Bobby, 
I am a veteran and lost my leg to a roadside bomb. My victory was going from a wheelchair to becoming a weightlifting champion. I'm Sam. I'm a veteran. My victory was finding a career that I could be proud of. At DAV, we're on a mission, helping veterans of all generations get the benefits they've earned. I'm Cece. My victory was finishing my education. When America's veterans win, we all win. Help us support more victories for veterans. Go to DAV.org. This is Jay Crawford, former ESPN Sports Center anchor and proud former member of the BGRSO Sports Organization right here. You're listening to 88.1 FM WBGU HD1 and HD2, broadcasting more games than any other student-run organization in the country. Half time here at the show center, the Bowling Green Falcons 45, the Winnenberg Tigers 27 here in this exhibition game. The school day game. A lot of schools, a lot of local kids in the area here attending this game with the Falcons. For the last game before the start of the 2024 2025 women's at basketball season. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. We are now officially in. It's afternoon now, so good afternoon, everyone. I'm Lucas Klein, Mark, going alongside Foster, Rice, Dave Foster. You can't always read too much into these games. It's not an official game. It's a Division One school, obviously, in Bowling Green, going up against a Division Three school in Wittenberg. It's a good experience for Wittenberg, a good experience for Bowling Green as well to play. It seems they just don't play it a lot often. But what did you make of the first half? Well, Bowling Green played very well getting the ball down into the paint. They played through Painter a lot, who had a lot of easy layups and 13 points. No, oh, I'm sorry, 15 points in the in the first half. They played through her very well. They were passing good and they had a swarming defense. A lot of screens by guard to guard were switches and they turned, made them turn the ball, ball over a lot. Seven steals in the first half. They were playing extremely well. Yeah, that's, that's definitely something that I would say has been a, a big thing that's popped out for Bowling Green. I think if you're head coach you will probably take into the season is how aggressive they've been on the defensive end to gain those steals and how aggressive they've just been defensively as well. And maybe that's a new tactic they're trying to do to start of the season because they were aggressive last season, but sometimes they would kind of kind of hold off a little bit depending on the team they're playing, like a Buffalo, like a Toledo, like a Ball State, because those teams were off to the class of women's basketball last season. Let's go through the points real quick for the first. Eric Kapoor led the way for the Falcons, 15 points on 6 for 9 shooting, 3 for 3 for the free throw line, 2 rebounds as well on 11 minutes played. She was sensational in the paint. Absolutely. And you had Kohler with nine points, three for four from the field, and one for two from three, along with Fern with one three as well with three points. So, you know, rounding out the scoring, but, you know, everyone's kind of getting their hands in on the offensive end, which is great to see for the Falcons. Pretty much everyone has played this game as well in some capacity. Maybe, well, it's one minute or really high in minutes with 14 has been Paige Kohler. She's played 14 out of 20 we've seen so far this game. A lot of points coming from different different players as well. And for the Wittenberg Tigers, 27 points on 11 for 28 shooting, 2 for 13 from 3, and 3 for 8 from the free throw line. All 8 of those free throw attempts came midway through the second quarter, so struggled them offensively. But, Car uh, but Carson Carlin for the Tigers have been very impressive with 9 points. Absolutely. She's starting to find spots where she likes to take shots, especially around that free throw line. Little zones where she can take a nice kind of step back or fade away from that area. Must be a one shot that she loves to take. But also, you had Reagan hit two threes in the first half, kind of extend the range, kind of make the defenders come out and guard her. And that's something that for Wittenberg in their upcoming play, that's something they're going to want to have a lot of. Barnett, as well as someone we called her name a lot the game, five points, um, two for four shooting. Baker came in a lot in that second quarter and really played heavy minutes. It was very good. Playing one of the guard positions. Mossing is someone that's having a rough stretch a little bit. Got the start over two shooting there from the Tigers. I, you can hear the kids here getting very excited at what's going on in the Jumbotron, all the fun games here on the school day game. Well, the best part about a school day game is you get to miss school, and that's oh, even good. better. And we say that as we aren't missing our own classes right now. Maybe, maybe we are. Maybe we are. Maybe we don't. Maybe we aren't. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> it's a uh, game. But, but regardless, in all seriousness, for Bowling Green, get got tournament minutes left to play for basketball, third quarter, fourth quarter coming up here. For head coach Fred Schmiel, what do you want to see in the second half? Keep getting into the paint. Get it to Porter. She's been playing the best, and they've started to double team her. You can see they're dropping down two players for on Porter. Have her start to look and know that double teams coming to spray it out to a player around the three point line and hit a wide open three. Is there any players particularly you'd like to see get more playing time, a little more, or you'd like to see a little bit more 
in the second half? Uh, I'd say actually Brooke Simpson has played very well. She's had a very good vision of the court, seeing where the players are open and feeding the post for the Falcons. I'd say give her a little bit more time. Let her run the offense a little bit through her and just see what she can kind of do in the second half. Indeed. We'll see if Freshman likes to do that there. The Bowling Green Falcons have a pretty substantial big lead, 45-27 here at halftime. We'll see if he plays any of the starters in the second, 45, second half, I should say. Rather, 10 minutes coming up in the third, 10 minutes coming up in the fourth for this last game before the official start of the 2024-2025 women's basketball season here. The Bowling Green Falcons and the Wittenberg Tigers. We're just five minutes away here from third quarter action here on Falcon Radio. Interested in joining Falcon Media Sports Network? If you're looking to get involved, send an email to sports at bgfalconmedia.com. BGSU football junior tight end Harold Fannin Jr. continues to dominate on the gridiron. Fannin earned the Mackey Award Player of the Week honor for the third time this season after recording 10 receptions for 171 yards in Week 8 against Kent State. Fannin moved into first place all-time for BGSU tight ends in receiving yards with 1,714, passing his position coach Alex Bayer, who had 1,543. Fannin leads all tight ends nationally with 60 receptions, 873 receiving yards, 495 yards after catch, 42 first downs, 21 broken tackles, and 5 touchdowns. He has the highest overall pro football focus grade of any player in the country at 97.4. This has been 60 Seconds in Falcon Athletics. On Tuesday, September 24th, BGSU men's soccer recorded 40 shots against Eastern Illinois, the most in a match since 1996. This has been History in Falcon Athletics. Hope you enjoyed your meal. And I just want to say, he's lucky to have a brother like you. Lucky? Caring for my brother is far from easy. But he's a part of me, like my arms and legs, so I'll be his. No time for tired. Nothing can disable this love. He needs me, but I'm the lucky one, even though I need help now and then. If you're caring for a loved one, visit aarp.org caregiving for care guides and community. Support for your strength. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. On October 4th, 2024, BGSU Volleyball opposite hitter Lauren Hovey recorded her 115th career service ace in BG's comeback reverse sweep of Western Michigan, passing Paige Penrod for the most in program history during the rally scoring era. Falcon Media Sports Network's Chaz McNeil had the call of the historic moment on WBGU 88.1 FM. And that will make history. Lauren Hovey's 115th ace in the rally scoring era is in the history books as the Stroh Center applauds. This has been a Falcon Media Sports Network featured call. BGSU Volleyball's Sydney Hernandez has been a terrific addition to the team this year. The freshman defensive specialist has played 73 of 75 total sets for the Falcons, making a great impact on the team's performance through non-conference and MAC play. Hernandez has made an instant impact in the serve game with her 24 total aces and .33 aces per set, both second on the team behind Lauren Hovey. She has also contributed 23 assists offensively, second only to Lindsay Lapinta in her position. Defensively, Hernandez has been just as good. The freshman has the third most digs on the team with 137, the most reception attempts on the team with 389 and only 29 errors for a superb 925 save percentage. This has been 60 seconds in Falcon Athletics.
back here, ready to start third quarter action here at the Strode Center between the Bowling Green Falcons and the Wittenberg Tigers. 45 for Bowling Green, 27 for Wittenberg, so a substantial lead for head coach Fred Shamil and the Orange and Brown coming out of the locker room. Once again, thanks for joining us here on your Tuesday morning, now afternoon. I'm Lucas Kleinmar, drawn alongside Foster Rasta here. We are just about seconds away from tip-off, start the third quarter. It's the same starting five for Fred Shamil to begin the third quarter as we saw in the first. Yeah, absolutely. Kind of getting these players just kind of warmed up, ready to go, because basketball regular season starts very soon for the Falcons. We want to get them one more quarter, maybe a little bit into the fourth, just warm them up, get them ready to go, and get them set for the season. The five for the Falcons, Velasco, Kohler, Ellis, Porter, and Donahue. Same five for Wittenberg as well, that they start with Carl, Bloom, Reagan, Moore, Gaines, Burns, and Cash all in for Wittenberg as Wittenberg will start off with offensive possession. Kane's Burns has that one swatted away. Didn't quite see who that was at the official <laughs> blocking my perspective yeah. there, but a Falcon swatted that one away from Burns on the opening play of this third quarter. Here's Donahue coming back for the Falcons. Ellis. I believe it was Ellis with the block actually there. Getting over and yeah, hey, Ellis there with the big block. I'll take your word for it. Ellis out to Porter inside. Has a lot of contact there. Still going to put the shot up there, but can't get that one to fall, be a foul called on Wittenberg. We'll see who they awarded to. Yeah, absolutely. That was a great pass over the top, way to go up and grab it. And Painter has been just such a dominant force. They want to wrap her up and not let her take any more easy shots down low. That's Taryn Cash for her third personal foul of the game for the Tigers. And Porter will go to the free throw line. 15 points in that first half and now make it 16 as she now is 7 for 10, 6 for 9, excuse me, rather, from the free throw line. Yeah, Porter's been shooting great from the free throw line today. A big, must have been a big increase from last season. Last season she shot 56% from the free throw line. Right now she's shooting amazing from free throw. 17 points for Porter. Yet another foul on Cash, it looks like. Yeah, that's going to be screen, maybe. We actually gained Burns to be awarded that one. Both players were in the area there. Looking to go quick out to the left wing of that foul, and Burns will pick up her fourth personal foul, so she's one away from fouling out. Yeah. Ellis will inbound this one to Velasco. Here's Velasco. Ellis. Donahue left wing dribbles inside and has a lot of open look and an open lane. Donahue knocks that one down and gets that one to go. Way to go. Saw the opening in the lane. Miscommunication by two Wittenberg defenders. Took it strong to the hoop by herself. Barnett. Deep three coming on the way from Carbloom. That one rolls in and out. Rebound in front of Velasco. Velasco kicks it back to Kohler. Kohler and the Falcons looking to go quick. Kohler kicks this one out in the left corner for Donahue. Down drives to the byline. Has that one knocked away there from Gaines Burns. Donahue gives one to Kohler. Kohler does well there to avoid the takeaway. Kohler now out to the top of the key. Dribbles inside with her left hand and finishes with conviction. Paige Kohler gets the Falcons down to 51 points, 51-27. 8-3 left to play. The Falcons have came out extremely aggressive in getting down into the hoop. This is great, and I'm sure Coach was adamant about getting to the paint in this quarter. Here come the Tigers. Back the other way. Reagan. Out to Moore. Moore tries a shot there and gets nothing but net. Donahue will keep this one in play to Velasco. A little bit of a loose dribble. Able to pick it back up. Velasco goes... Clears out for full head of steam, kicks it out to Ellis. Ellis guard underneath the rim contestedly. First shot won't go, grabs her own rebound and puts that one back up in. Very good. Great first move. Got it. Went up, got the defender up, went under, missed the layup, got her own rebound and put it right back up. Fast paced third quarter action here at the show center. Barnett kicks this one out to the left wing for Reagan. Reagan now drives inside there and a high shot there off the glass and gets that one to fall. Way to use the backboard on that one. 53-29, Bowling Green, 7.30 left to play. Here in this third quarter, Velasco up the court once again for the Falcons. Pass down low to Porter. Triple team from Wimberg Tigers and almost got that one to fall. Putting up a tough shot there, but once again, she'll be fouled. Painter is feeling it tonight. You can just tell. She doesn't want to take and pass it out of those big paint touches when she's got the ball on her own. She wants to take those points and make, it, make them continue to triple team her down there. Erica Porter feeling it. This game, all max selection in the preseason. 
Had a historic program breaking season last year for the Falcons. And you really saw a lot of times last season more than that, the offense kind of run through a quarter. The amount of injuries and a lot of players they had unavailable for the Board of Falcons. 17 points, six for nine, shooting five for five for the free throw line in Porter. We'll get our first attempt to get off the front of the rim and roll in. Porter once again looking to make a two for two trip and she does it. Perfect trip, 55, 29, Bowling Green. 7.25 left to play. Here comes Barnett and the Tigers. Barnett dribbles inside, kicks it out wide left. Gaines Burns checking back in, loose pass, and runs out of real estate. Goes out of bounds, Bowling Green will take over. That was some great defense. A little bit out of position at times, but everyone got back and hustled to where they were supposed to be and forced a turnover. Here's Velasco. Signals a screen from Ellis, and a nice pass inside for Donahue. Oh, what a pass from Velasco. Donahue lays it up and in. That was a great, great backdoor cut. Started to bring her defender high. Hard cut backdoor. Took a nice, easy layup there for Donahue. That's the second and third time we've seen that same play. The Falcons do that backdoor cut with Lars and Velasco Porter are, are now Donahue getting in on that one. So very successful for the Falcons as Wimber comes back the other way. A deep three is way off the mark from Reagan and a rebound there from Donahue. And a foul gonna be called on Barnett. Yeah, the Falcons are really starting to show they've settled themselves down. They're really starting to go through their progressions and plays and they're starting to play to what their strengths are, getting into the paint and scoring easy. Barnett, now that's her fourth personal foul. So two Wittenberg Tigers are now one foul away from fouling out in Barnett and Cash as we have a whistle blown here as the Tigers are inbounding. And Barnett's now going to be taken out. And in comes Cronin. So the Falcons will inbound this one once again. This time it will be Paige Kohler. And we'll see what the discussion is. It was a clock problem. It was 63 seconds <laughs> left, not 6 minutes 31. Just a little bit of a clock miss. 6.31 left to play, clock back right. Kohler, a long pass all the way to Porter underneath the rim, and nice little pump pick there, put that one up and got that one to go. Yes, way to go and find the ball as well. A little bit outside of her zone, went over, got it, underside of the basket, still laid it up strong. Cronin for Gaines Burns. Burns working on Velasco inside the paint underneath the rim. Gaines Burns, and that one just goes in and out. She has not gotten a shot to fall from her this game. That was her first attempt so far this game. But Velasco is going to be called on the foul, and Gaines Burns well, the Falcons will go to the free throw line. The Falcons have done a very good job of just keeping her out of the paint and just keeping the ball out of her hands. They know she's a very good player, and so they've decided, hey, we're going to take you out of the game and make the rest of the team play harder. So Gaines Burns looking for her first points of the day, and she's got it. Nothing but net there. 59-30 now. Bowling Green a 29-point lead. 6-11 left to play here the third. Gaines Burns perfect from the line. Two for two. 59-31. Puller. Out to the right wing. Velasco. Switches us all the way to the left. Donahue. A Windenburg Tiger falls down. Donnie has that poked away initially from Cronin. Kicks it out to Velasco. Velasco gets that one to roll around the rim and trickle in. It makes it a 30-point lead for the Falcons. A beautiful hop there there. Got up, both feet in the paint, laid it up perfectly. Velasco there telegraphed that pass from Cronin. She was looking to find Gaines Burns there on the left wing. Can't quite hold that one in. Running in and the Tigers will inbound this one. We got 22 seconds on the shot clock, so plenty of time for the Tigers to create something. Kane Burns passes one in low to Mossing. Mossing puts that one up. And good. Molly Mossing haven't ca called her name much. She gets her first points of the game. Make it 61 33 now. Bowling Green. 5.25 left to go here in the third. Kohler. 
Kohler. Bounce pass to Porter. Tough shot there. Just a little bit too much on that one. But once again, she draws another foul. Absolutely. See, there's another double team down there. Even before she had the ball, they've started doubling teaming her extremely early to keep the ball out of her hands. That's Peyton Cronin picking up her first personal foul. And once again, Porter will go to the charity stripe. Seven for seven from the free throw line this game. Looking to go eight for eight. As Shumil giving instructions there to Taya Ellis. Here's Porter's first attempt. Got it. Nothing but net. Make it 22 points now for Erica Porter. Looking to get one of the best numbers in basketball, 23. Gets that one to Ricochet and make it 23. 7 for 10, now 9 for 9 for the free throw line. Absolutely, he's playing really, really good today. Mossing, down low, Cronin. Long pass, switching all the way to the left wing. And that three-point attempt on the way from Boyd is no good. And a whistle called, and a Wittenberg offensive foul will be called. Ellis, he's checked back in this game for the Falcons. We'll end down this one. Here's Velasco once again. Seeing a lot of Velasco being a dictator with the ball up the court, especially in this third quarter. Velasco hands this one up to Donahue. All the way to the right wing now. Kohler. Kohler, long switch back to left. Velasco going to unlock a three. Amy Velasco, you bet. That is what Porter does right there. She demands so much attention down in the paint that a, the Velasco defender stepped down, and she had a wide open three. Tigers. Looking to go quick, a bounce pass from Keynes. Burns was looking for a car, but couldn't get that one. A loose pass, Porter picks it up. Gives this one out to Paige Kohler. Kohler now hands it up to Velasco. Velasco looking for Donahue, instead takes a deep two. That one no good. Nice hustle from Donahue to keep the ball in play. Porter puts up a shot, that won't fall. Gets her own rebound and gets that one to fall. Erica Porter now has got 25. Erica Porter is just dominating today. Ready to go, ready to show how much she worked on last season into this season. Long three on the way from the Tigers. That's Gaines Burns unlocking. A quick three taken from the Tigers. Can't do it. Velasco looking to go quick. Velasco. Oh, nice bounce pass to Ellis. She had a wide open there underneath the rim. Wasn't climbing the same page as Velasco. Go out of bounds for a turnover and win ball, winning bird basketball. Yeah, Ellis kind of slowed herself up on that run to the hoop. Velasco kind of dropped it off, and she wasn't ready for it. So with that, we have now, now that we have a break, now we're past the media time now 355 left to play in the third quarter Bowling Green Falcons 68 the Wittenberg Tigers 33 a comfortable lead for the Orange and Brown we'll take a quick break here and be back with you for the rest of third quarter action here on Falcon Radio on October 4th 2024, BGSU Volleyball opposite hitter Lauren Hovey recorded her 115th career service ace in BG's comeback reverse sweep of Western Michigan, passing Paige Penrod for the most in program history during the rally scoring era. Falcon Media Sports Network's Chaz McNeil had the call of the historic moment on WBGU 88.1 FM. And that will make history. Lauren Hovey's 115th ace in the rally scoring era is in the history books as the Stroh Center applauds. This has been a Falcon Media Sports Network featured call. Back here, 3.55, left to go here in the third quarter, 68-33, Bowling Green over Wittenberg. And right now, across the Stroh Center, I would love to paint this picture for our listener. They are doing Baby Shark across the entire Stroh Center with all the kids, elementary schools around this area here on this school game day. Yes, it's a, it's a definitely a first for me seeing this in the Stroh Center. It is electric in here, though. And... And a game like this, ex exhibition game, obviously doesn't count like you mentioned on the broadcast so many times. Doesn't count towards the record. Bowling Green enjoying a hefty lead. Games like this are all about having fun. Getting players on the court and having fun for all the kids that are coming here from around the local area. And I'm not going to lie, I've never seen a scene like this in the Stroh Center 
in my three years so far I've been here, and I don't think it'll be the last time I see something along the lines like this. But it's great that they do this for the kids nonetheless. Absolutely. Getting the kids involved, great for the community, great for the team to see just how much everyone appreciates them and wants to see them succeed as well. So let's recap a little bit of the action last time we went off the air. Erica Porter there, dominant, and in Alaska starting to feel it as well. 25 points for Porter. 8 for 12 for from the floor, 9 for 9 from the free throw line. Amy Velasco, 11 points as well. 1 for 1 for 3, 6 for 6 from the free throw line. Paige Polar, 11 points as well. Those three have been excellent for the Falcons. Absolutely. They've been doing a great job. And their defense, it may not show up on the stat sheet, but their defense is very, very good. They're switching a lot. They're getting into position, and they're just holding them to just great defense. It is it's so loud in the store center right it now. It is deafening and the kids get rowdy, that's for sure. Boyd inbound this one out of the way for the Tigers. 3.45 left to go here in the third. Wittenberg, an offensive possession spell. Whistle called and it's going to be a call on Bowling Green. Didn't quite see what number. They got Moxie single. on that. They're gonna, she kind of had her forearm out pressing the offensive player. So Moxie just into the corner. First personal foul along with Kohler, Velasco, Donahue, and Taya Ellis. And a deep three taken here from Gaines Burns. And how about that? Gaines Burns knocking that one down. That's what the Wittenberg Tigers are going to need to see all season for them when they start their regular season play. Gainsburg getting into a rhythm, getting some shots up, and playing hard. Velasco, Ellis, Donahue, out wide to the left, Kohler. Kohler bounce pass inside, Moxie in the paint. A little too much juice there on that shot over the rim. Rebounded here from Mossing. Moxie get herself a little bit too low in the paint there. She needs to stay a little bit higher so she can turn and have a nice open area. Just hit, hit that box, use the backboard, help you lay it in. Here's Cronin, top of the key, out wide to the right wing. Here's Boyd. Boyd, top of the key. Dribbles inside, not working inside the paint. Their tough shot. It's getting more and more. Probably more. Gonna knock that one down. 68-36 Bowling Green. 68-38. Excuse me, our Bowling Green. A 30-point lead for the Falcons. 240 left to play. Here's Velasco back there away for the Orange and Brown. Moxie. A lot of contact there underneath the paint. Try to hold that ball in play. Uh, we'll see who they put the foul on for the Tigers, and it's going to be on Gaines Burns. And that's going to be Gaines Burns' fourth personal foul. So now we have three Tigers, one foul away from fouling out. Yeah, they've been playing real hard. They've been playing aggressively. We're going to get a couple of those fouls when you play a little bit too aggressive. So Kendall Moxie will go to the charity stripe. Two points. Both of them came from the free throw line earlier in the game. That one hits off the front of the rim and bounces out. Moxie's second attempt. Can't get that one to fall either. So no for two trip there from Moxie. But Donahue steals the ball again. And a jump ball call is going to be called as her and Moore were on the ground. Now they got a foul call on that actually on 25 for Wittenberg. Wait, great job by Donahue. Thank Tipping you. the ball out, then hustling to get on it. Thank you there, Foster. They didn't quite see what the official single. Was preparing to turn and look at the other side of the court, but then all of a sudden he looked left, and Donahue was on the, on the floor on a loose ball. She's been excellent this game. First time we got to see her play in a Bowling Green uniform, and very looking forward to seeing her play all season long as Donahue able to make her first from the line. Absolutely. Donahue has been hustling on the court, first to the ball, first to the ground, and getting some great steals because of it. Donahue there. There we go, two for two. 70 to 38 now, Bowling Green. 2.30 left to go here in the third quarter. There's Boyd. Boyd to Carl Bloom. And this one off here's Baker. Nice little exchange is top of the key. Cronin. Cronin to go and lock a deep three. Cronin, that one not going to fall. Corey able to get the rebound. It just can't quite keep that one in play as her foot just out of bounds. Wittenberg will still have possession. That's a great hustle for three-year-old. They wanted to get out, get out and run it fast. That's going to happen. It's kind of little too far out of there, out of the, yeah, just right on the line. Here's Cronin. Baker. Baker kicks this one out. A deep three rejected by Taya Ellis. Carl Bloom trying to hood up a three, and Ellis, uh, no ma'am. 
Not today, not for Ellis. Ellis really reached, extending fully to get that three blocked and no body contact at the same time. That was great body control. Donahue again pokes it away, but Cronin able to pick up her own rebound. Carver takes one out to Mossy. Shot clock is gone. As the Tigers could have put up a shot in time. Bowling Green take over. That's his excellent defensive play, though, from Bowling Green. Absolutely. That starts with Donahue up top, tipping that ball up, making them waste a couple of seconds trying to get the ball back into their hands. We are now under two minutes left to play here in the third quarter. 70 38, Bowling Green. Velasquez will drill this ball up the court once more. Here's Kohler. Kohler, bounce pass, gives it off to Donahue. Donahue looks to drive inside. Donahue gives this one back to Kohler. Nice patience to hold the run of Paige Kohler, and she gets someone to go off the glass. Great vision by Donahue and great move by Kohler to see that the ball was gonna, the paint was going to open up if she made a cut around. Carl Bloom, a deep three there off the front of the rim, and that one is no good once again. There's Donahue and the Falcons once again. Here's Kohler. We're now down to a minute ten. Kohler works left. Nice little another backdoor run for Velasco. That time they couldn't connect. Baker there picks it up. Baker now leads this one out to Carl Bloom. Carl Bloom. Here's Cronin. One minute remaining now in the third. Boyd, top of the key. Guarded by Ellis. Here's Moore. Moore gets this one off to Mossy and a deep three there. It's not close. I think Ellis got it. I think Ellis got a finger on that one. And she might have, I mean, from our angle, it didn't look it, like it, but. She has such a long reach. Yes, long, long arms. Great extension on them, too. And she's getting her hands on some nice blocks. And a three-point attempt there from Baker. <laughs> Whistle blown, and it's going to be a foul on Amy Velasco. Or excuse me, actually, they're going to wear that to Paige Kohler for her second personal foul. Shooting three for the Tigers is McKenna Baker. So Baker's first attempt is no good. Two points. One for three from shooting from the field. 0 oh from two from three. And 0 oh from one from the free throw line. Able to get that second one to go. She'll have one more. Baker. So one for three there on that trip. That one ricochets out. Rebound there from Ellis. Six rebounds now from Ellis. Here's gives this one to Donahue. Donahue with the heat of steam driving to the rim, to the rim, I should say. A lot of contact and another foul. This time Kelsey Reagan will pick up her third personal. Absolutely, all of the Falcons today have done a good job just putting their head down, getting to the rim, being strong, going up strong, and getting foul called for them, and get, living at the free throw line now. So Donahue, eight points, two for two from the free throw line before. I have another trip, and Donahue gets that one to go. And so in a game like this now, Foster, it's out of reach, obviously, for Wittenberg, and obviously, you know, wins losses doesn't matter when it's an exhibition game. What do you like to see from the Bowling Green Falcons remainder of this game? I'd like to see them running their place completely, getting maybe not the first play, first pass done, second pass, go through their progression, see what's working, see what they can find as a team to just really flesh out what they have on offense. And then on defense, st stay strong, co don't commit fouls like just happened, and just keep yourself calm. So Donahue was perfect there from the line as Wittenberg was taking their time there on the offensive possession. Velasco just looked like accidental contact almost a little bit, but regardless, too much there on Velasco. That's her fourth personal foul of the game. So here comes the Tigers. Here's Baker out to the right wing. Now shifts to the top of the key. Tries a deep three. That one no good. And a rebound there from Taya Ellis. Ellis now seventh rebound of the game. Velasco tries up a three as the buzzer sounds. And can't get that one to go as that's going to do it for the third quarter action here at the Stroh Center. Bowling Green 74, the Wittenberg Tigers 39 here. We'll be back in a little bit for the start of the fourth and final quarter. You're listening to the Bowling Green women's basketball team here on Falcon Radio.
USU Women's Basketball hosts an exhibition against Wittenberg on Tuesday, October 29th. Falcon Media Sports Network's Lucas Kleinmeier and Foster Ross Dye have the call for pregame at 10.45 and tip-off at 11 a.m. on WBGU 88.1 FM. Sweet strawberry icing. You're in goodwill and just past that vintage denim jacket you spot. Miniature donut earrings. You lean in. Ah. Oh. That's the scent of shopping success. Because at Goodwill, every item you buy funds local job training and more. So bring home those donut earrings and bring home so much good to your community. Goodwill, bring good home. Brought to you by Goodwill and the Ad Council. Welcome back inside the broadcast. We are moments away from the start of the fourth quarter action. Bowling Green, 74. Greenberg Tigers, 39. And this one final tune-up before the official start of the 2024-2025 women's basketball season for both these teams, winning for the Division Three program, the Boyer Falcons Division One, and the Mid American Conference. I'm Lewis Carmar, going alongside Foster Ross Dive for the start of the fourth quarter. Massive lead for the Falcons. What do you want to see here in the fourth quarter from head coach Fred Shamil and the Orange Brown? I think if you're the Falcons, I think you want to see some of your freshmen get some playing time. I think you want to work on them, work on getting them set. So if something does happen, no, you know, if you have a player who gets sick and you need to have somebody sub in or you have foul trouble, you have somebody who can step up and be a key contributor in, in many different situations that you might run into. Indeed, you are right. A lot of players who find themselves to be down the depth chart, maybe just not in and out starters. Fred a lot of players actually fought through injuries last year and came back and have been stronger than ever. 35 on the court for the Falcons coming out of the break. From the looks, it looks like it's going to be Layla Harrison, Emily Cecil, Brooks Simpson, Lauren Gherkin, and Jasmine Fern for your five on the court for the orange and brown. For the Winnenberg Tigers, it's been pretty much the same 25 they've had all game long. Also, I have a couple players that have to change in, in and out. As uh, the Falcons will inbound this ball, Emily Cecil. Or inbound this one, here's Layla Harrison. Pressure from Cincinnati, Ohio. Kulaj Koska. This is one top of the key, making a move inside. Puts up a tough shot and gets that one to go. How about that? Through the contact and everything. Great move Ooh. to get herself down, moving into the paint, fading away from the contact, and still losing the glass to lay it in. Eastern Florida State College transfer. Kulaskovska. Looking to make her mark. A junior as well, guard or a forward for this Bowling Green team. Putting up a tough shot there, looking to make it a three-point play, and does. Another connect from the free throw line there. Now 77-39 Bowling Green with 9.38 left to go in the fourth. What I think is very important to know for Wittenberg, that was on Burns. That is her, I believe it's her fifth, and she's done for the night. You'd be correct. That is Burns' fifth personal foul. Didn't see who they labeled that to. But Burns' afternoon is done. As Cash will come back the other way for the Tigers, looking to feed that one to Mossing. Tough contact there underneath the rim. And a foul going to be called on Bowling Green. I think they got Harrison on that one. She was in position, a little late to slide over on that lob pass over the top. That's what you want to see. She wants just needs to be a little bit more early. You won't get that foul and stay out of the restricted area. I believe you are. Hope orders checking in for Gaines Burns. Her afternoon is done. Temp on the way for Mossing. That one ricochet is in and out. So an empty trip there for Wittenberg. I think it's six for 15 from the free throw line now. Here's Bowling Green the other way, Cecil. Harrison moves inside, nice little step over move to get to the glass and lays it up and in. Very nice. Just from the first quarter to now when Harrison had that missed shot, just how much more composed she looks as the game goes on is great to see for a freshman. And then Tigers the other way orders. Looking for Reagan. Reagan's going to try a deep three. He's looking to use the glass there to help there. Couldn't do so. Kulachkovska comes back the other way for the Falcons. Here's Gherkin. 
Bergen moves inside. Nice little move. Now kicks this out to Harrison. Moves inside. Tough shot from Harrison. High arcing shot there, but got it off the glass, and he got that one to fall. So a nice couple of tough shots from the freshman. 81-39, Bowling Green, 8-15 left to play. Here's Reagan, guarded by Cecil. Now to the left wing, here's orders. We'll drill this one back up, now tear on the shot clock. Here's Cash. Now I got five on the shot clock. Cash moves inside, Cash kicks this one out, and a deep three on the way, and from Mossing, and Mossing knocks that one down. That was great play by Cash. Pull the defense in with her, kick it back out, wide open three, finish it. That's a good, good offense for them. Use the ball, the shot clock as well. That's what you like to see. Absolutely. Look at the Wittenberg Tigers. Here's Harrison. Good watch, Koska. Joe's inside. Now Joe's to ring. Puts up a tough shot there on the contact. Was looking to go with her left there on the shot. Then kind of at the last second switched to her right. But regardless, a foul on Tyron Cash. And that's going to be her fifth person to foul. And she's going to foul out as well. So Cash, the afternoon is done. It was actually Brooks Simpson with Kulach Kovska. My apologies. Going to the free throw line. So Simpson. Pressure from Michigan. Well, we'll get that one to go. Simpson there, two for two on that trip. Here comes Wittenberg the other way. Here's Barnett. Barnett hands this one off to Orders. And a deep three there on the way from Reagan. No good, rebound on Simpson. And Simpson's got a full head of steam come back the other way. Simpson, nice pass, looking for Harrison, and Harrison, nice pump fake, and gets that one up and in. Great ball vision by Simpson right there. I didn't even see Harrison down in the paint waiting. That is amazing to just see her rise up, dump it over the top of Harrison. There's Barnett, dribbles inside. Gherkin, and a little contact there. And she'll get the shot to go, and we'll have an attempt from the free throw line to add one more. Yeah, Barnett got Gherkin right behind her. That's where you want to defend her as an offense player, especially when you're heading right towards the rim. He's able to draw the foul. So five on the court for Bowling Green. Harrison, Cecil, Fern, Gherkin, and Simpson. An attempt on the way from Barnett is off the front of the rim and no good. Here's Cecil, and kicks it out to a wide open Jasmine Fern for free. That one's no good. Simpson is trying to go on the rebound there and Bowling Green will still have possession there. We'll see who they like to call the foul on. We're going to get Hope orders for this, her first personal foul. So Cecil, Emily Cecil will inbound this one. Cecil feeds this one to Gherkin there. A lot of contact down below from Bollard. It should be called on the foul. And I think they're getting Gherkin in a lot of good looks. Obviously, she's a very tall player. Want to use her size down low on, bo on both ends of the, of the court. Oh, absolutely. Especially when you have players in front of her like Painter or like, well, yeah, just like Painter tonight. You want to just see what you have in your backups, see what they're able to do in the paint as well. So if Painter has foul problems or something else is going on with Painter, you can see what you can do, go to. Able to convert there from the line. And Boyd. Here's Barnett. Barnett kicks this one out to the left wing. Cronin. And a long three on the way from Barnett. That was no good and rebounded there from Fern. Fern gets this one out to Cecil. Emily Cecil. Nice little bounce pass. Looking for Simpson. Simpson couldn't quite hold that one. Simpson. Back to Cecil. Top of the, of the wing. And he'll reset this play. 15 on the shot clock. Here's Gherkin. 
Gets this one back out to Simpson. Simpson, a tough shot on the right near the byline. And she'll get that one go. Brooke Simpson, a couple of tough shots in the fourth quarter. Absolutely. She's looking very composed out there when she's getting into the paint and taking, looking to take her own shot. Tigers once more. Cronin guarded by Harrison. I still switch off to Barnett. Barnett gets a nice little screen and pass. Drives the side to a wide open three in the corner as the buzzer sounds and she drains it. Peyton Cronin from the corner. That was great ball vision there. All That's the way, even almost out of bounds, passing under the basket to the corner for a wide open three. That's the fifth three point made this game for the Tigers. Now five for 27. Cecil out to Harrison. Harrison drills inside to her left. Three Wittenberg defenders. Underneath the rim there has that one knocked out of bounds. So a couple of subs coming in for the Falcons. Christian Kulaskowska will come into the game for the Falcons. Kendall Moxie will check in and Taylor Wallace will check in as well. Media time now, but we're going to stay right here with it. 88 Bowling Green, 47 for the Wittenberg Tigers Foster. Under five minutes just to play here and the fourth quarter for the start of the season. What are some of the stuff you've seen this game for the Falcons that you've liked and you want to see them apply to the regular season one start? Point of attack defense for them. They have harassed the guards for Wittenberg all game. And it's been made, Donahue has been the just amazing on it. If she can keep up what she's doing tonight, maybe not as many steals as she has. I mean, she has, what, five of them tonight? Maybe not five, but just keeping getting hands on the balls, keeping defenders from getting up easy shots near the three-point line and driving. If you can keep that up the entire season, you will have a humongous just advantage over every team in the map. Another player I also would like to spotlight this game has been doing amazing. Taya Ellis, you know, a very, a very good rebound on the ball on both ends. Seven rebounds so far this game. Leads the team four blocks as well. She's been incredible defensively. Eight points on four from six shooting. She's a player that fought through a lot of adversity last year, you know. There's so many players that weren't healthy, you know, a new coach coming in, uncertainty of your role. Ellis, you know, maybe didn't have the role she wanted last season, but now this year, fully healthy, fully committed, fully ready to be a big contributor to this team. Getting rewarded with the start this game as well. Absolutely. When you kind of go through those things and your coach sees you go through those things and still play hard and play through everything that you go through in the season, you really get a lot of just the coach trusts you a lot and she's showing it tonight by letting him her start and just how well she's playing especially on the defensive end with the four blocks is going to be huge for the rest of the season one of the biggest storylines coming to this season no doubt is the health of lexi fleming by far the face of this team everyone knows who lexi fleming is if you are associated with beach flex such a good guard in her fifth year from cincinnati ohio suffered a, another knee injury last season had her season cut short coming back full health not dressed tonight didn't get to start, didn't play, but her role coming into this to this team this season, with a lot of young and new players that have that seem to be very talented, like Donahue, like Kulaj Koska, like even Brooke Simpson we're seeing a little bit as well. Layla Harrison's been very good this game as well. Her role as a leader, when she comes back fully healthy for this team and the play is going to be very big. Oh, absolutely. She's going to be the steady hand that this team needs. She's going to, in the big moment, she's going to be able to calm everybody yes. down. She's been through these things. She knows what happens. So she can really help grow the players for the future of the Falcons. So a very good play back underway here. Kulash Koska inbounds this one, gives it the boxy back to Kulash Koska. Koska kicks this one out to Wallace. There's Tara Wallace. There's a nice little cut and didn't quite see how much time she had left on the shot clock there. Shot didn't quite get it off. 88 47 Bowling Green. Now 4 47 left to play here in the fourth. Here come the Tigers, other way. Nice little spin move here from Bullard. Kicks it back out wide. Here's Colbum. I mean, that was Bullard looking for a three. Moxie will get her own rebound. Put up the second shot. Can't get the go. Rebound Moxie. And since then, the Falcons will come back the other way. And that's a good job by Moxie. Really getting into the paint, playing with the big players, and just getting an offensive rebound, getting another chance for points. Simpson keeps his one up to Harrison. Harrison. 
Blaskowska there. Trying to get it one of Simpson. On the return pass from Mall. That's a little too much contact there. So another foul called on the Tigers. It's their 26th total foul as a team. And the first personal foul called for Candace Boyd. So Simpson will go to the line once again. And Simpson knocks down the first one. Free throw shooting has been great for the Falcons today. 23 for 33, 28 for 33, sorry. Make that 29 for 34. Great, just amazing. That's gonna help you win a lot of games and really put you ahead of teams. 90 points now for the Falcons. 90-47, BG with under four minutes left to play here at the Stroh Center and a long pass there from Conan. They would have fine orders and then a hard Charge in there. We got a charge, yes. Way to take another charge. The Falcons really getting up there, really doing those hustle plays and getting set. Nice job. That looks like Kulov's coach is taking the charge. Nice. Way to go. Indeed it was. So and then now this one to Simpson. Simpson, screen set there from Kulovskovska. Hands this one off to Harrison. Harrison. Goes all the way around to the right. Harrison, a tough shot there. He uses both hands there to get that one to fall. Well, you know, they say both use both hands when you're shooting. Four protection down low. Take it up two hands, go strong. And that's what she did, and she laid it up nice and easy. Here's Cronin. Uh, wide left to Boyd. Here's Boyd. Surveys her option with Boyd. Back out to Bollard. Bollard. Back to Boyd. Boyd looks inside to Mawson. Good pass inside. Good defensive play there from Clutch Costa and Wallace. And a deep three there is way off the mark there from Orders. Moxley trying to drop, drop down the rebound and not able to do so. Yeah. A little bit of too aggressive trying to get that rebound. Kind of got her hands on the, off, on the Wittenberg player trying to get the rebound. Be careful with that, especially when you're going towards the Wittenberg bench. You don't want to see anybody hurt, especially in an exhibition game. 92, 47, Bowling Green. Three minutes left to play here in the fourth. Falcons have got 66% from the floor this game compared to Wittenberg's 34%. Been a great shooting day for the Orange and Brown. Leading the way has been Eric Rapport with 25 points on 8 for 12 shooting. As the Tigers will inbound this one. A change was made right before the ball was inbound. Emily Cecil checking into the game for Layla Harrison. And a turnover there from the Tigers. And Simpson and the Falcons will end on. For Cecil. Bringing the ball up the court. Cecil. Now goes all the way from the right wing to the left wing. Got 12 on the shot clock. Still looking to find someone. Finds Wallace. Wallace finds Simpson. Simpson. Nice little behind the pack. A nice little move into the paint. Brooks Simpson. Oh, couldn't get that one to go. Moxie tried to get the rebound and can't quite do so. Out of bounds. Yeah, the offense got a little bit stagnant there. Kind of didn't have anybody open. Kind of need players to move to get open to help the ball handler. Yeah, you saw a little bit with Cecil there was looking for just an option and a lot of players just weren't kind of moving off the ball. Yeah, and that's something that's going to drive coaches crazy. You want to see movement. You want to get players, especially when you have movement, you get defensive players out of position and you help yourself get open shots. Wallace finds Kulaskowska, her shot attempt. No good, rebounding from the Tigers. And a double dribble call there from Covert, who's checked in for the first time this game, and her first bit of action there on the ball will be a double dribble, so Bowling Green will take over. Simpson inbounds this one to Cecil. Cecil to Wallace. Wallace. Simpson. Glass Koska, and a little too much there from the junior transfer. No, they, called a ball, they called a body blocking foul on that one, actually. Wow, I thought that was going to be in, in favor of Wittenberg from the looks of well, Koska's reaction. It was very close. She did start to get that form a little bit up. That's what I saw, too. I, I was assuming they were going to get a charge, but no, they caught a, a blocking foul on Boyd. It, it was the side look of, are you serious, a little bit on the call, but instead gets the call and gets to the charity stripe and knocks down the first one. 93-47 now, BG. Yes. And a perfect trip to the line for Kulaskowska. 
94-47 BG now. We are just about two minutes left to go here in the fourth quarter. Here's Boyd. Boyd drives down low and a nice pass all the way to the right corner. A three-point tip from Covert is no good. And rebounded from the BG. You watch Kofs go the other way. A long pass to Simpson. Simpson and a wide open three for Emily Cecil and she drains it. Great vision by Simpson to see Cecil following up, setting herself up in a spot where she likes to take that three and draining it. Good for Emily Cecil to get her first points of the day and unlocks and loads with three. 97-47. It's a 50-point lead for the Falcons. And that three-point attempt from Winnenberg is off the mark. Rebound from Simpson from Cecil. Can the Falcons get it? Points 100. Taylor Wallace, you bet! We reach 100. Freshman Taylor Wallace knocks it down. And you know Wallace has to be really proud and happy just to hit that shot. That's a, that's a great shot to hit, especially in transition like that. And the students here in the crowd and the kids go crazy. The Orange and Brown break 100 with a minute left to play. And stolen away from Brooks Simpson. Simpson the other way and lays that one up and in. Doing the crowd a nice little show towards the end of this one. And you just hear Fred Chimiel kind of signal to Simpson, the team. Not an A-plus look weird, but I believe he said no more scoring oh. to his Falcons team. So they got 100, got 102 now. 56 seconds left to play here. I'm sure, I'm sure that's what Coach said. Probably just slow it down, run some plays, or just dribble it out at the top, let the clock run down. So. A little bit of game leadership from Fred Chimiel. Obviously not a real game. Big lead for the Orange and Brown. No need to score more. Under a minute left to play. Let's get the kids home happy. Absolutely. And if you're Wittenberg, yes, you lost by a decent amount. But you came into Bowling Green. You've played extremely hard. You did a lot of really good things. You saw some great cuts into the basket and kicks out to the corner for wide open threes. Those will start to fall. You will have a very successful season. And this really helps you build on what you want to do for the rest of the season. So great game for them it's a it's a great experience for them they had good they had moments oh in games like this when you're at the program that's not a division one program for the lower team you want to find moments when I mean, you know you're completely out of magic Woodburn has had moments this game where they're showing good and this can only be positive that they can take to when they start their season and also eventually they start their conference play when they go against teams that are more so their level but this game can also make them get better as well. Absolutely, and I'd say for Whitmer, that first half for them was amazing. They kept Bowling Green, they were right in it. 14 and 13 points to Bowling Green's 25 and 20. They were never out of it in the first half. They stayed hard, they fought hard, they played great offense. So yes, they have a lot of really good things to look back on and say, yeah, it was a hard game. We played hard and we played really well against a very good Division I MAC team. So we still got a minute, under a minute left, but the Falcons 66% from the floor. Five of nine shooting from three. Five for 30 for Wittenberg. They've taken 30 threes. For the Falcons, 31 for 36 from the free throw line. A lot of, a lot of trips to the charity strike. This game for sure. I wonder how many of those have in Erica Porter. Well, she's got nine of those. I can't do math in my head, Foster. You've got to help me out here. I can't either. Don't worry. Ah, well, you know, we'll figure it out later. What are, we don't need math. Turnovers for BG, 10 compared to 19 for Wittenberg. Points off of turnovers, 35 for Bowling Green. That's a substantial margin. 35 points off the bench as well for the Orange and Brown. So overall, I think head coach Fred Schumi will be happy with his team's performance, and they're, they'll get locked and loaded for Southern Mississippi and next Monday. Absolutely. A lot of really good things to bring out of this, especially for Porter. Porter had a very, very dominant game. And if she stays that dominant throughout the season, you're going to have a lot of defensive crashes down on her, and she'll be able to have wide open threes to their great shooters around the arcs. Same five for the Falcons to finish off this game. Emily Cecil, Moxley, Wallace, Simpson, and Kulach Koska. As Wittenberg will come with one of their last offensive possessions of the game. Here's Cronin. Cronin looking for Hankerson. Getting her first pizza minutes of the game, Cronin. Back to Voget. Voget, here's Cronin. Guarded by Cecil. Cronin, tough shot there, no good. Rebounded there from Kulachkovska. Shot clock is off. 20 seconds left. Wallace. 
And the Falcons will all but dribble this one out into the hands of Cecil near midcourt. And 10 seconds remaining, and 10 seconds will trickle off. Here's Simpson. As the kids count us down, and the game, the buzzer sounds, and this last tune-up before the start of the actual season is in the books. The Bowling Green Falcons take it down. The Wittenberg Tigers, 102 to 47. This exhibition game and this school day game here at the show center. Yeah. Absolutely great basketball. You always love a good basketball game, tune-up or not. It's always good to have a team come in, fight hard, play hard, and get your team really better for the next game. We'll take a quick break here, and we'll recap a little bit of the game and preview a little bit of the season for the Falcons here. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to BJ Sutherland's Basketball on Falcon Radio. BGSU Volleyball's Sydney Hernandez has been a terrific addition to the team this year. The freshman defensive specialist has played 73 of 75 total sets for the Falcons, making a great impact on the team's performance through non-conference and MAC play. Hernandez has made an instant impact in the serve game with her 24 total aces and .33 aces per set, both second on the team behind Lauren Hovey. She has also contributed 23 assists offensively, second only to Lindsay LaPinta in her position. Defensively, Hernandez has been just as good. The freshman has the third most digs on the team with 137, the most reception attempts on the team with 389, and only 29 errors for a superb 925 save percentage. This has been 60 Seconds in Falcon Athletics. The possibility of lung cancer can be pretty scary, especially if you're one of approximately 8 million current or former smokers at high risk. That's why SaveByTheScan.org wants you to know that now there's a breakthrough low-dose CT scan that can detect lung cancer early, and it only takes 60 seconds. You stop smoking, now start screening. For an easy quiz to see if you're eligible, visit SaveByTheScan.org. It could save your life. SaveByTheScan.org is brought to you by the American Lung Association's Lung Force Initiative and the Ad Council. This is the story of Julie Guillot. She's a Leukemia and Lymphoma Society advocate and the mother of a child who battled blood cancer. Zach was diagnosed with AML, a deadly leukemia, when he was only five. He died at just nine years old, really from the treatment that was meant to save him. Today, the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society is pioneering breakthrough treatments for kids with cancer. Visit LLS.org and save a child's life. Since the moment you were born, I've made a thousand wishes. Wishes for your future in a world that's changing fast. Do play and laugh. Do win and lose. Do it all with confidence, kindness, and strength. And always do your best to remember that no matter what you do in this life, what matters to me is that you keep doing. Inspire kids to do at 4H.org. You pledged your life to serve. You made sacrifices, lost loved ones. At VA, we don't see the falls you've taken. We see the thousand times you've stood back up. We embrace your uniqueness and won't trivialize your hardships. We can't promise to heal all wounds or wash away all trauma, but we do see a path forward. We see all veterans. We see you. Learn how treatment works and recovery is possible. Visit maketheconnection.net. Long ago, you wouldn't think of galloping on a horse while doing calligraphy, and you wouldn't have attempted to ride your bike while typing a letter, yet you think you can safely operate a multi-ton vehicle while texting? Behind the wheel is no place to multitask. If you want to BRB, drive now and text later. Lives depend on it. Visit StopTextStopRex.org, a message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, Noise, and the Ad Council. Final score here in the Stroh Center. Bowling Green Falcons 102, Wittenberg Tigers 47 here in this last exhibition game before the start of the actual season. We just climb our Foster Rostack here to wrap everything up for you right before we send you off to enjoy the rest of your Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday night. Foster, your overall thoughts on the match? 
I think it was great. I think the biggest thing to take away from this game was the point of attack defense from this Falcons team. They were harassing guards the entire game. I know I've said it once, and I'll say it again, but I love a good defensive team, and this is what this Falcons team looked like today. Harass, harassing defense, five steals from Donahue alone, nine as a team, four blocks, all coming from Ellis. That's something you'd love to see as a defense, and defense travels, and that's a great thing for this Falcons team that has some hard road games this season. They do indeed, and for players that stood out this game, obviously, if you're looking at just the box score, got to go with Erica Porter, 25 points and 8 for 12. Shooting for, for the free throw line, nine for 9, 3 rebounds as well. She was sensational as well this afternoon. I think Amy Velasco and Paige Floor also players you really have to talk about. Velasco was a very good floor general this game for the Orange and Brown. Polar seems to be like she's going to take that next step in her game in her sophomore season. Absolutely. And I, I'll take, if I wanted to go play her game, I'd go with Donahue. The five steals is a great way to start off the season, even if it's an exhibition game. That's going to be something you watch all season. And if there's a defensive MAC team, I'd watch for her, maybe even make all defensive first team of the MAC this season. Brooke Simpson's also someone you've got to mention 11 points off the bench. There's five shooting, five for five for the free throw line. She got herself in a lot of dangerous spots, had great movement in and around the court inside the paint. She's a freshman that I've been looking forward to seeing all season long, and a lot of these Bowling Green players. And, and Foster, Bowling Green, first game of the season, be right here at the Show Center next Monday. Sitting on Southern Mississippi at the Show Center. What are your expectations for that game? And what should Coach Shamil and his team kind of look for in that game? I think they should look for a strong defense. Like they came out, came out hard and play hard defense. Defense will travel. You're going to miss shots. You're going to miss, you know, you're going to make mistakes on the offensive end. But if you can keep your defense as good as it was tonight, you're not, you're going to give every team that you go up against, whether it's here in Stroh or anywhere else in the road, you're going to give every team just fits because of how good that defense is going to be. And then just paint her to get work down low. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, myself, alongside a lot of members of the Falcon Media Sports Network, will be alongside BBC Women's Basketball all season long on, 80, on WBGU 88.1 FM instead of Falcon Radio. So make sure you tune in on WBGU at 7 p.m. next Monday. That'll do it from us here at the Show Center for my broadcast partner, Foster Rice. For our board operator back in the Falcon Radio studio, Tyler Cavlitz and B Falcon Media Sports Network production director, I've been Lucas Kleinmarth. Thank you for so long and tuning in. And have a good rest of the afternoon, everyone. This broadcast has been a Falcon Media Sports Network production. For more BGSU sports news and updates, follow Falcon Media Sports Network on Twitter X at BG underscore FMSN, BG Falcon Media on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, and head over to BGFalconMedia.com. Okay.